Every year around the world, there are thousands of new records that are broken. From simple things like weightlifting all the way to the most body piercings, some are a bit odder than others. For the most part, these records tend to be harmless, but every now and again, something goes wrong. Today, we're going to be looking at what went wrong during the 1986 Cleveland Balloon Fest as they tried to break a world record by releasing almost 1.5 million balloons all at once. But before we get started, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already to never miss an upload. And also drop a like down below if you enjoy this video at any point. So the 1986 Balloon Fest was put on by United Way of Cleveland, a charity organization that wanted to do the stunt for publicity and fundraising. The goal was to set a new world record, and they certainly achieved that. While it sounds like a fun publicity stunt, the truth of the matter is that things went south very quickly. The idea was to make the event a giant publicity stunt whereby people could sell sponsorships for filling up balloons, which would go to fund the charity. To prepare, the organization set up a giant rectangular mesh net over the public square. The area covered over an entire city block. From there, roughly 2,500 volunteers, mostly students, worked for hours filling up the balloons with helium. United Way would make $1 for every two balloons filled up. It was supposed to be relatively straightforward. The goal was to inflate 2 million balloons to release them into the air. However, there were concerns that morning of bad weather. They stopped at around 1.5 million, and at 1.50 p.m., the balloons were unleashed. News reports show people being ecstatic at the display. It was the biggest balloon launch since the 31st anniversary of Disneyland, which had occurred the previous year. No one thought anything could go wrong. Organizers believed that the balloons would eventually run out of helium and fall back to Earth, where they would biodegrade. Unfortunately, things did not pan out that nicely. The organizers were told that there would be bad weather that day, and it certainly came. A front of cold air and a rainstorm ran through Cleveland, which pushed the balloons back to the ground. Normally, a helium-filled balloon will lose all of its air before it descends back to Earth. However, the happen chance of bad weather caused the balloons to return while they were still filled up. The balloons ended up covering the streets all around Cleveland, resulting in multiple car accidents. Reports show that drivers slowed down and gawked at the sight around them. They even made their way to the Burke Lakefront Airport, shutting down an entire runway. The owner of a prized Arabian horse, which was spooked by the falling debris, ended up suing United Way for the injuries and ultimately won $100,000 in damages later in court. The balloons coming back to Earth didn't directly kill anyone. However, completely unrelated to the event, the Coast Guard was looking for two fishermen, Bernard Sulzer and Raymond Broderick, who went out fishing on September 26th but had not been seen since. Of course, the next day was when 1.5 million balloons went up into the sky, which complicated search efforts. Before the launch, rescuers had discovered the fisherman's boat, which was anchored just west of the Edgewater Park break wall. The Coast Guard assumed the boat had flipped over due to choppy waters, leaving the men stranded. Time was of the essence, but the balloons coming back to the ground served as a major hindrance. A helicopter was sent out to find the men, but it had difficulty accessing the search area due to all the balloons taking up space. Members of the Coast Guard who were actually on the water said there were too many balloons to see whether any bodies were floating. On September 29th, the Coast Guard had to suspend its operations, and it wasn't too long later that the men's bodies washed ashore. The wife of one of the fishermen would later sue United Way as well as the company that helped them put together the balloons. She initially sued the organization for $3.2 million and ended up settling out of court for an undisclosed sum. United Way in Cleveland released 1.5 million balloons into the air, some of which landed in Lake Erie and on an airport runway, shutting down the airport for a half hour or so. It seems to me the money spent for this stunt could have been used to much better advantage, seeing as how most of the funds were probably from donations from people who donate because they believe their money is going for a good cause, such as helping out the more unfortunate. 
William F. Corrett, a writer based out of Woodbine, Iowa, wrote another piece lamenting the events that unfolded this day. However, he was more concerned with the loss of a precious resource, namely helium. His report read, It is most distressing to see pictures of the mass release of helium-filled balloons, as such an activity involves loss of a non-renewable resource merely to gratify the urge to observe a visual spectacle. Once released, the helium is gone forever, and this rare gas is hard to come by and is much needed in non-frivolous scientific and industrial activity. It's clear that this event was poorly planned. The organizers should have given more attention to what the weather would be like that day. They also should have checked with local law enforcement agencies to make sure there were no ongoing investigations for missing persons. The last words that would come from this event came in the form of a 1994 profile by the charity's director of marketing and communications, George Fraser. The profile read, By the early 1980s, he'd left P&G for a three-year stint as director of marketing and communications for United Way Services of Cleveland. The period was marked by an incident Fraser calls his greatest success and his biggest failure, Balloon Fest 86. Unfortunately, the sky that day did not remain clear for long. Rain forced vast numbers of balloons back down as far south as Medina, where they spooked a horse who hurt itself on a fence. Meanwhile, police crews that searched the lake for a body complained that all those bobbing balloons looked like heads. Fraser prefers to remember Balloon Fest for its conception and pre-mishap majesty. The Guinness Book of World Records officially gave United Way the record for biggest balloon launch in its 1988 book. A grand total of 1,429,643 balloons went into the air. But there is a good reason why this kind of stunt has not been attempted since. Although the organization claimed the balloons were biodegradable, they were still made out of plastic. No company today would ever dare performing a similar stunt for fear of what the public reaction would be, which would certainly point to Balloon Fest 86 and the disaster that ended up being. One or two balloons accidentally going up into the air isn't the biggest deal ever. However, when enough go up en masse, it can lead to devastation. If nothing else, all those deflated balloons would have eventually littered the streets of Cleveland anyway. I seriously doubt we will ever see anything like this again. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, then make sure to leave some future video suggestions in the comments down below. Our favorites will be pinned at the top and featured in that video. With that said, thanks for watching and we will catch you all in the next one.